Hello, my brothers. Hello, my sisters. What another beautiful and awesome day today. To always be in the prison of the Lord. Another day right now. To give him all the thanks right now. To give him all the praise right now. And to give him all the glory. Today is the day that the Lord has made. And I am so glad. I am so glad to be a part of it. And rejoice in it. And I'm so excited right now. I'm thrilled right now. Just to be in the presence right now. I'm so excited right now. I'm thrilled right now. I'm motivated right now. Just to praise and fellowship with all my brothers and sisters right now. Well, because I know God is going to move through this place today. I know that he's going to heal today. I know that he's going to deliver today. I know that he's going to speak to somebody today. I know that this word is going to resonate with somebody today. Because someone is going through exactly what God is about to speak on today. And today is the day to always put your faith and your trust and hope in Jesus again today. Because the more that you continue to trust him and depend on him and hope in him, he will never disappoint you, my brothers and sisters. And I know right now it seems like it's never going to work. It seems like that it's never going to happen. But at the end of the day, Jesus is always working. Even when you see, when it seems like that he is, he's not doing anything, he is working on your behalf. Because why? We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a powerful God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve Him. And Jesus should always be first place in your life. No matter what. No matter what. You continue to trust like that's the last thing that you ever had on this planet on earth. Because the more that you trust, he's going to continue to work and amaze you. It does not surprise me how amazing he is, how wonderful he is, how loving he is, how kind he is, how understanding he is. We serve a big God. Amen. Amen. That's why praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, he is still on the throne and he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business and he is still in the blessing business. God is so good. He is so good. And if you truly, truly love Jesus, it should be a problem for you right now today. Just magnify his name, glorify his name, and always put him first place. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you peacefully and humbly right now in the mighty name of Jesus, giving you the thanks, praise, and glory. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we're about to receive. We thank you, Father God, for this powerful message today. They're going to keep us full or keep us satisfied. Oh, Heavenly Father God, there's no place that we're ready to be at right now today, Jesus, but right here in your house, in your sanctuary right now, lifting you up, glorify you, magnify you, and always put you first place. Oh, God, we just honor you, Father God. We just worship you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we're about to receive. We thank you, Father God, for this powerful message, God, that's going to keep us full and satisfied today. Oh, God, there's no place that we're ready to be at right now today, Jesus, but right in your house, Father God, lift you up, glorify your name, magnify your name, and exalt your holy name. Oh, God, we just thank you, Father God, for who you are, what you have done, what you're about to do. We just thank you, Father God, that we know that your presence is around here right now, that you are moving through us, that you are working for us, God, not against us. Oh, God, we just thank you, Father God, that we can always call on you, we can always depend on you, that we can always rely on you, Jesus. Whatever it is that's on our mind, whatever it is that's in our heart and spirit, Jesus, that we can always talk to you about it, and we can always cling to you, Jesus, because we know that you are listening. We know Know that you are there. Oh God, we just thank you, Father God, with glory, Father God, and thanksgiving and praise in your courts right now today, Jesus, because this is your house, the house that you built on solid ground, the house that you built on solid foundation, the house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered, God. Oh God, we just glorify you right now. We magnify your name right now today, Jesus. Father God, you have your way in your house today, God. Allow the angels to join us in praise and worship right now. Lift us up right now today, Jesus. Soften our heart right now today, Jesus. Fill us up with more of the Holy Spirit through the service and through the sermon. 
right now today, Father God. Oh, Father God, we just ask you, Father God, to amaze us, God, because, God, you are so amazing, God. We believe and we declare, we decree, Father God, that something good and that something amazing is going to take place. Something good and something amazing is going to happen in our life, Father God. And I'm just manifesting it right, right now today, Father God. I'm speaking it to an existence that I know is going to take place, God. Oh, God, we just thank you, Father God, for who you are, God. We just thank you, Father God, for the day because we are here today for, for praise. We are available for service. We are available for the kingdom. We are available right now today for us to continue to do our Father's will. But most of all, Jesus, we are available for you. You have an open invitation, and you are invited right now today in your home right now, on your YouTube channel right now, on your platform right now, and my brother's home, my brother's life, and to my sister's home, and to my sister's life. Holy Spirit, you have an open invitation. You are invited right now today on Jesus', on Jesus YouTube channel right now, on this platform right now, and this sanctuary right now, and my sister's home right now, my sister's life, and my brother's home and my brother's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move to this place. I'm asking you to touch. I'm asking, asking you to do some things like you've never done before, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to fill us up with more of the Holy Spirit. Quiet our thoughts right now. Comfort us in the time of our comfort right now as we receive this word and receive this powerful message. Oh, excuse me. Oh, Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move in our life right now and just touch us right now as we give you the day of praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. It's like praise is an everyday thing. Praying is an everyday thing. Repentance is also an everyday thing. Why? We all make mistakes. We all drop the ball. We all fall short of God's grace and mercy each and every day. Every last one of us do that. We all make mistakes. There's no battle on this planet called Earth can say that we are perfect. Because we're not. We're not perfect at all. So yes, we need him right now. Yes, we depend on him right now. Yes, we rely on him right now. So there's no need to try to hide what you did. There's no need to try to sugarcoat what you done. There's no need to try to sweep it up under the rug. Because he saw what you done, he heard what you done, and he was already aware of the situation. So if you can't keep it real being honest with Jesus, you can't keep it real being honest with nobody. So I need my keep it real brothers, and I need my keep it real sisters. To join me in repentance, if that's okay. Lord Jesus, I ask of you to please forgive me, all my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything in Jesus that we've done wrong in the sight of your eyes. Father God, please forgive me, all my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything in Jesus that we had in our heart that was not part of you. Father God, please forgive me. All my sisters, all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our mind that was not part of your Father's will. Please forgive us, Jesus. Wash us clean right now today, Jesus. Purify us through your blood right now today, Jesus. Wash us as white as snow right now today, Jesus. Father God, I want to say thank you for forgiving us. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for coming through. You didn't have to do it, but you did anyway. And I just want to say thank you. And before I get started, it's something that's always in my mind about you, Jesus. It's something that's always in my spirit about you, Jesus. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and the fruit of my lips about you each and every day, Jesus. And Father God, I just got to tell you how I really feel about you. I can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my faith, my trust, my hope in your hand every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I want more of you, Jesus, and less of myself. 
because I can't thank you enough. That's why I brag. That's why I boast about you. That's why I talk about you all day long, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart into you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. But let Jesus know right now that you can't thank him enough. I want to talk about something that's been going on for quite some time. And I never heard nobody actually to minister on this type of subject. Even though it's happening, even though it's going on, but I feel like that a lot of people are afraid to talk about it is because they probably going through it within they self. But according to this word, you got to speak on everything that's going on. Because this one thing about this Bible, it speaks life. It speaks truth. And it is spirit. And everything about here in this Bible is shared and it won't come to pass. And what God spoke to me uh, yesterday afternoon, and they say, sir, I need you to speak on something that a lot of people need to know. And I say, Father God, what is it? So as I sat right there, just listening and meditating, the Holy Spirit folks say, I, God wants you to speak on home records. Because there's a lot of home records that's going on because a lot of men and a lot of women out here feel like they can break up happy homes and thinking that God is going to bless them. Think they're going to get a reward from it. They think that they men and they woman is really theirs, but they don't realize it's going to blow up in their face. They don't have no idea of the pain and the scrutiny that they are causing another brother and another woman. They don't understand the, the severeness of their actions. If you know that this man is married, you have no business woman sleeping with him. If you know that that woman is married, man, you have no business even sleeping with her. You know what comes with that. It only comes devastation. It only comes pain. It only comes suffering. I don't care what they tell you. If you know that that person is married, you are causing pain on the other person. You are causing suffering on the other person. You are causing hurt on the other person and at the end of the day both y'all are selfish because the, at the end of the day you're only thinking about your selfish needs which is the flesh and the word tells us in the book of John chapter 6 verse 63 that the flesh sticks to nothing because it holds doors to nothing and at the end of the day what you think that you're doing it's going to blow up in your face because at the end of the day what you thought that was your man did you really thought he really was going to leave something so good as to be with you? But you thought that was your woman? But you thought she was going to leave everything just to go with you? She was just looking for a good time. She was lost. She was vulnerable. And you felt like that you was going to do this and do that? At the end of the day, she knew what it was like he knew what it was. And a lot of y'all, by y'all doing this, Y'all guys are denying each other. And the moment that you was able to deny the person that you were sleeping with, there was no love, there was no respect for neither one of y'all. Home records is what you are. You're home wrecking a home. Because in God's eyes, marriage is a sacred and covenant thing. And once you do that, you already got evil inside of you. And there's no way that you're doing evil and think that you're going to get some. oh, help me, Jesus, that you're going to get good out of that. How in the world that you can do evil and you're expecting Jesus to bless you? How in the world that you can do evil and you're expecting Jesus to reward you? What kind of God you think that we have? What kind of God you think that we serve? What kind of God you think that we honor? You think he's going to put up with some foolishness like that and think that you're going to get a blessing out of that? Think that you're going to get a reward out of that? You got to be drinking on something. You got to be smoking something hard and heavy. But I'm telling you right now, you better put that alcohol down. You better put that dope down what, you, what you're smoking on because there's no happy ending in your situation. There's no reward in your situation. There's no favor in your situation. There's no blessing 
in your situation. And I'm going to show you there's no reward in this. I'm going to show you there's no blessing in this. I'm going to show you there's no favor in this. And I'm going to show you how it's going to blow up in your face. I'm going to show you it's going to be devastation. I'm going to show you the same hurt, the same pain, the same suffering that you call that brother and sister. It's going to be the same pain and suffering and hurt that you're going to have to face and that, that you're going to have to encounter all at the same time. So don't think that you're getting away with or what you've done. Because you're not. It's already lined up for the blow up in your face. It's already lined up for devastation. And I promise you, it ain't going to be nothing pretty for you, my brothers and sisters. It's not going to be nothing nice for you, my brothers and sisters. Because you will go through it. Amen? Amen. Can you please turn your Bible to 2 Samuel chapter 12. And we're going to read verses 7 through 12. And we're going to finish off at verse 18. That's 2 Samuel chapter 12. And we're going to read verses 7 through 12. And I'm going to finish off at verse 18. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Then Nathan said to David, You are the man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel said. I anointed you king over Israel. And I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arm. I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if all this had been too little, I would have given you even more. Why? My brother and sister, listen at this. Why do you despise the word of the Lord by doing what? What is evil? Why do you, why do you despise the word of God, my brothers? Why do you despise the word of God, my sisters, by doing what is evil? It never said what was good because home record is nothing good about that. Sleeping with another married man and another married woman, there's no good in that. That is evil because that is exactly what you had in your eyes. That is exactly what you had in your spirit. That is exactly what you had in your heart. And you think that God is going to bless you? You think that you're going to get a reward from that? I'm sorry to tell you, my brothers and sisters, it's going to blow up in your face. I promise you that. What is evil? What? And the eyes. You struck down Uriah. The high type of a sword. And took his wife to be your own. And that's what you did my brothers. You slept with another man's wife. To be your own. That's what you did my son. You slept with another woman's husband. To be your own. But at the end of the day. They don't belong to you. God will never give another person another man's woman to him. It's like he'll never do a woman, vice versa. He will never give you that. So by you sleep with another man's husband, another woman's wife, that's not your husband. That's not your wife. What you think? Not by, by doing it that God is going to bless you? By doing it that you're going to get a reward? By doing it that you're going to receive favor? By doing it that you're going to receive a our protection by doing it that you're going to be anointed? No. They, they don't belong to you. That was never yours. That was never your man and that was never your woman. So if you think that's what it is, you are sadly mistaken. Amen? You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now therefore the sword would never what? Depart from your house. See, you already put the sword in your house, my brothers and sisters. You already know whatever you already left, you are planting a TNT bomb in your house. And right now you don't know that bomb can go off at any second. Right now, you are at the very edge and at the end of the wire because what's gonna happen? The TNT bomb is gonna explode in your house. It's because you put it in your house. You planted that seed in your house because of the word seed. You will never depart from your house because you despise me and took the wife of Uriah, the high tech, to be your own. This is what the Lord said. Out of your own household, I'm going to what? Bring community upon. That means disaster. That means you are cause trouble. It's already in your house. It's already planted there because you bought it there. Trouble, you bought it there. Suffering, you bought it there. Hurt, you bought it there. You bought that there because, yes, it's going to happen. It's going to blow up in your face. 
You can't get mad at nobody. Ain't no need for you picking the phone and try to call the X man back, the X one back, so called friend. It's because nobody's gonna feel sorry for your tail because what you done, you done what was wrong in the eyes of God. You had, if you had every intention to do what you want to do with him and her, you wanted to sleep with him. You wanted to sleep with her, and you didn't say no for an answer, even though you knew that man was married, even though you knew that woman was married. You knew what the consequences was, and you thought you thought that God was going to bless you. You thought God was going to give you a prize at the Cracker Jack box. That what you thought. You thought, you, you thought that you had it going on. You're telling everybody how happy you is, how glowing you are. you about to see how happy you are. you about to see how glowing you about to be because it's going to blow up in your face. The word already said. You brought disaster to your own house. You brought trouble to your own house. You brought pain and suffering to your own house. You did that when you took it upon your ability to sleep with him and her in your crib thinking that he is yours and you, you were him. You did that. You did that. Amen? Amen. This is what the Lord says out of your own household. I'm going to bring calamity upon you before your very eyes. I will take your wives and get them to someone who is what? Close to you and he will not lie with your wives in broad daylight. You did it in secret. But I'm going to do this in broad daylight before all Israel. God said when you were sneaking and creeping behind another man, another woman back by sleeping with him, God said the same way that you did it secretly, that same person is going to sleep behind and going to cheat on you, but they're going to do it in broad daylight and it's going to hurt you. It's going to devastate you. It's going to terrify you because what you did in secret, you didn't think God was going to bring into the light. You didn't think that you were going to get exposed by sleeping with another man and another, and another woman. You got exposed. And this season, God spoke to me and said, I'm going to expose those people that are sleeping with married men and married women. And right now, someone just got exposed. But God said, I know that you're hurting right now. Don't think for one second that that person who did that is going to get blessed by me. Because they're not going to get blessed by me. They're not going to be favored by me. They're not going to be anointed by me. And they're not going to have no protection. But one thing he does say, it's going to blow up in their face. It's going to blow up in their face. It's never going to work. Because they were never they man or never they woman in the first place. What they did was evil. Did right wrong in the eyes of God. And God has put up with it for way too long. He has sat back and watched you hurt and cry and mourn over this hurt and over this pain, even though some of y'all has called these men and called these women, asking, can you please stop sleeping with my husband? Can you please stop sleeping with my wife? And they have that audacity that say, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know him like that. I don't know her like that. And they don't even realize they've been exposed for the evil and the dirty and the nasty things that they did to you, and they still have to audacity to sit there and lie to you. And you don't think they got to pay for it? King David had to pay for it, what he did. King David was a home wrecker. So if King David had to go through this pain and suffering, what makes you think that you got to go through this pain and suffering? If King David brought problems and pain and suffering to his household, what makes you think that you ain't got to bring it to your household? King David brought this on himself. So the same way that King David brought her on himself is the same way that you brought her on yourself my brother sisters the same thing that king david had to go through you are going to go through the same thing the same way that it blew up in king david's face it's going to blow up in your face the same way my brother sisters get ready because this is the time this is the season this is the moment that you home workers what you was trying to do is going to blow up in your face amen verse 18 you go to power it's going to blow up in your face it's right here Listen to me good. These ain't my words. These are the words from the word of God right here in the Bible. Verse 18. On the seventh day, the child died. David's servants were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they thought while the child was still living, we spoke to David. But he would not listen to us. How can we tell him that the child is dead? He may do something desperate. Why? See how the child died? He took another man's woman to be his own. Slept with him, got her pregnant, 
See, he was he, he, ha, ha, thinking everything was good. Home wreck a family. Broke a marriage up. Because he thought because he was right with God, he thought God was going to be right with him in the evil things that he was doing. And that's what's wrong with some of these home records. They think they cause they know God a little bit, or you might have heard about God, that God's going to be right there shaking their hand, giving them a half ass. But I'm proud of you, my brother. I'm proud of you, my son, for doing what you do. No, God don't work like that. God does not operate that. The moment that you slept with him or her, you already did evil in the eyes of God. And you think that God is going to bless you and reward you from that? No. The same thing that you call that pain in that brother and that sister's life in their marriage is the same thing that you got to go through. When King David did what he did, King David, King, David, King David thought by sleeping with Bathsheba that God was going to bless that baby. But God had to take that baby away from him. And the moment he took it away from him, that's why it blew up in his face. And he hurt it, King David. He couldn't eat. He couldn't sleep. He couldn't think. Because of the evil way he done. And the same thing that happened to King David is going to be the same thing that's going to happen to you. It's going to blow up in your face. It's going to blow up in your face. So don't think for one second, you home records, that you got away of doing what you're doing. You didn't get away with it. Your time is up. Your season is up. By sleeping with another married man and another married woman. Your time is up by causing pain towards their brothers and sisters. You're not going to like what God's going to do to you. Because it's going to be nothing nice. And if this word is for you, you know God is talking to you. And he told me to tell you, don't worry about it no more. They season it up. They TNT bomb they plant in their house. It's about to blow up in any given moment. And you're going to hear that bomb a mile away. You gonna think it's a, you think it's gonna be a World War 35 in that house? That's how bad it's gonna be. And he's telling them, stay calm, be still. It's gonna blow up in their face, and you are gonna know about it. And their husband and their wife, they are gonna come running back to their spouse again, apologizing, begging, asking, can they get another chance? I promise you that. That's gonna blow up in their face. And this word is for you. Give God some thanks and praise and glory right now in the house of the Lord. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. And I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying this simple little prayer, that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is with us .lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. You continue to trust him no matter how hard, no matter how difficult it is. You continue to trust him. Always keep your, keep your hands glued to Jesus. Don't you dare let it go because his hands are unchanged. You don't know when he's going to change your situation around. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you've ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to tend to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up to you. I'm serving Minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.